Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a good Dreamforce so far, first day. I'm here to talk about a topic that I think you're going to hear again and again and again at this Dreamforce in particular, and that's version control and Git. And obviously, the thing that's different about this Dreamforce that's making this topic just come up over and over is Salesforce DX. So Salesforce DX is really changing the way that we all build on top of the platform and putting version control first and foremost. What's interesting about Salesforce DX is that D, right? The D stands for developers, the developer experience. So I want to know what about the admin experience? How do admins benefit from version control and, and how do we work together as a, as a single team? So my day job is uh, running a, a startup that builds a Salesforce release management solution. Um, we're over there, and you should come and talk to us afterwards. And when I speak to all the admins that I speak to in my day-to-day -day work, it's the same thing comes up again and again around uh, nervousness around adopting Git or not quite sure where to start. And so much of it comes down to uh, complexity. So when people think of Git, they sometimes think of stuff like this, you know, incredibly complicated uh, branching strategies and incredibly complicated processes that people find very difficult to follow. And so what I say is you almost should never do stuff like this. This is never needed, and you should go for the simplest possible process that you know, your team can, can adopt. It's actually like sitting in the release management talk from the, the chap from Reynolds earlier, the car company, and he was sort of saying the same. It should be simple, simple, simple. Otherwise, people can't adopt it. Just because I'm not quite sure the experience level of the audience, I'm going to take this back to sort of first principles and what is version control. So if we don't think about it in the Salesforce um, application, what is, what is version control generally? And it's just a way to track changes to files. That's, that's it. Tracks versions of files and does a particularly good job if they are simple, easy to read text files, so traditionally computer code. So if you wanted to version video files or image files, source controls, not, not a super way to do that, and you lose a lot of the advantages. But if you have a text representation of whatever it is you're doing, then version control just makes it really easy to track, track changes to those files over time. And then why might you want to do that? Well, it gives you a chance to put them through additional peer review and get feedback on things before they're released. It allows you to have this trusted source of truth, this trusted central repository that you know is always, uh, always correct. And then, as I said, the really version control works at its best when you have simple, easy to read files that humans can read. But once they're in the source control system, there's lots of other benefits that come around having the machine able to read them as well. And you can start to do things like automated releases, or if I do this activity, automatically kick off that activity. So there's lots of advantages there as well. There's a bunch of terminology around version control, and some of it sounds complicated, but it's, it's really not. So version control, as I said, is just a way to track changes to files, preferably simple text files. Git is probably, uh, if not the world's most popular, then soon will be the world's most popular version control system. That's certainly the most popular for Salesforce projects, uh, in my experience. Uh, Git is simply a technology. It's just a way to version control files. So you need somewhere to, to put that server. And GitHub is, again, there's lots of these. Atlassian are over there. GitHub are over there. These are great companies that will provide you a, a Git hosting solution. If you, don't have a, uh, for, if you don't have a good reason not to, just go use one of those guys, and, and they'll do a good job. Uh, repositories, word that gets uh, used, it's really just a, a common collection of files with a, a common purpose. Uh, so in our specific application of source controlling Salesforce metadata, all of your org's metadata will go into one repository. Branches uh, provide an isolated view over the files so that you can make changes safely without impacting your other your teammates. And you'd make those changes by uh, committing files, not just checkpoints. So I've done some work. I want to checkpoint it. That's called a commit. And then merging that back. We'll cover all this in a demo in a second. But merging that back then is when you take the branch that you've been working on in isolation, your series of commits, and you bring them back into your team's branch. 
and you start to share that with others. So most teams we find go on a journey before they adopt uh, version control at all. So often when people start out with Salesforce, it's just everybody working in a single production org. And that gets you so far, right? We, I'm very much in the school of do something until it doesn't work and then fix it. You know, don't try to preemptively fix things. And so when you're simple and small, this, this model works perfectly fine. And then you, you know, accidentally change something you shouldn't have changed and you break things for your end users. And now you need to bring in a little bit more process. And the process that people normally uh, jump to is to just use more orgs, just use sandboxes. So this is a really typical, typical setup from one of our customers. You have each of your admins either working in their own isolated sandbox or else all working together in a single shared sandbox. But anyway, you're doing all your work there in the org. That's you know, where you, you live and that's where you do your things. You then use change sets to move those changes across from uh, your own isolated sandbox into an integration or staging environment. And that's then where you start to do all of the testing and make sure that if I've changed something and you've changed something, that those changes can happily coexist. And then you move through into UAT and finally through to production and you start to just put in these, just these little gates and hopefully they're not very onerous on you and you make it easy. With version control, you kind of flip a lot of that on its head. So, and this is particularly true with Salesforce DX. What you're saying is that source control is the most important thing. It's not, not the org. The org is obviously important. It's where your end users live. But for our day-to-day -day job, the, the source control system holds what we consider to be you know, the true state of our work. And that's this phrase, single source of truth, that people talk about a lot. But it just means that that's, those are the files that represent our org. And that's you know, what we're all, that's our common understanding. It means that when I come to do some work, instead of working in my own sandbox, I instead start off uh, in my source control system. The source control system is where everything begins. I create a feature branch. Now I have an isolated view over these common set of files. So I can do lots of things. I can uh, update my process builder. I can add validation rules. Whatever it is I'm, I'm doing that day to achieve my work, I can do that isolated from the rest of my colleagues. Do that in the org or do it locally and make a series of commits back to my branch. Now, once I've done my work, as I said, we can merge that back. So I take those series of commits, those series of things that I've done, merge them back, and start to share them with my team. And I'll quickly run through, just before jumping into the demo, I'll run through some of the benefits of why you do this. This single source of truth thing keeps coming up again and again. And that probably is the most important. That says that the source control system holds what we consider to be our org. So no more changes directly in production. Or if you do make a change directly in production real quick, then you better make sure that gets back into the source control system because later, when we come to do that scheduled deployment, that's going to come from the source control system. That's where we're all going to start. So if your work hasn't made it through to there, then it's not sort of valid work. It enables parallel uh, development streams, so parallel work streams. And there's lots of ways to do that. You can do that with different sandboxes and being careful with each other. But the uh, the real thing that source control allows you to do is, is have safety when you're doing it so that if we change the same work, then that's highlighted. We've got conflicts and we know, uh, we know how to do it. Some others around audit and additional visibility into, uh, into all of this. Um, and I guess the fundamental thing is it allows you to release sort of faster and more reliably. If you sort of go all in in the version control system, then it starts to pay back for you. So it's a tiny a little bit of additional process will start to, start to pay dividends. So why, why doesn't everyone do this? Why, why, why are we talking about this now? So source control has been around for forever and ever in other ecosystems. And why is it only that we're, we're starting to do it now for, for Salesforce? And the real problem comes down to, uh, well, there's a few problems, but the, one of the biggest is that historically, it's been very hard to get simple textual representation of the metadata. So if I if I'm updating a process builder, I get a nice UI. I can drag and drop. Everything's very good. Um, and representing that in text is, is very difficult. You know, I, there's no easy way for me to take the things that I've done in my org and translate that into a text file. So that's, that's traditionally been the, the biggest problem. And that's really a, a way to externalize the metadata. So that has come now. We're 
starting with DX to get more and more uh, sort of easy to work with metadata, and that's good. So the next problem you tend to come across is uh, just the technical barrier of using Git. Uh, it's not it's not super straightforward if you're new to a version control system. There's lots of command line tools, and even lots of the UIs sort of assume that you know what you're doing around Git operations, and you understand things like rebase and clone, and you know what these words are. And it just makes it a little bit hard to get going with. And then the final thing that we experience a lot with people that come to us is not knowing what good is. You know, that's sort of that diagram at the start with incredibly complicated branching. Lots of people go down a project, read lots of books, and you end up with this very complicated uh, set of gates. And you know, I think knowing, because there's so many different ways to arrange things and people have so many different opinions on it, it, it can be hard to just know what, what's simple and easy for your team. And it puts, puts people off. If the first thing doesn't work, they, you know, they, they get scared and they, they back away. So what, I, what I'm here to talk about is just having a simpler approach to all this. You probably see this theme that have, has run through sort of more or less every slide. It doesn't need to be complicated. It, it's fundamentally like a, a simple, uh, simple thing to do. So it can be simple to work with as well. So I'm going to do a demo, which I have to now face this way. So I'm going to make a few changes in my Salesforce org, and then I'm going to commit them to my Git repository and take a look at what that what that looks like. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my account object and add a new field. Do, do, do. The field I'm going to add is going to be a picklist field. OK. So this is going to be my favorite with the American spelling, get client. Because once you start to use Git, the next argument that will ensue in your team is, is what Git client you should use. The lots of options for this. There's a GitHub. There's source tree. Git extensions. CLI. Lots of options. And then I'm going to press Next to add this field. I'm going to mess with the profiles a little bit. So I want to be visible to this person, read only for this person. And I don't want to add it to any layouts just yet. OK. And then the other change I'm going to make in my org is I'm going to modify the account source. And I'm going to add a new pick list value here as well. And the pick list value I'm going to add is Dream 417. OK. So I've done a bunch of work in my org, um, hopefully not directly in production. So I've done it in my sandbox. And now I want to share that with the rest of my team via the source control system. Okay. So to get started with GearSet, it's really, really easy. We don't install anything into your org, um, and we don't require credit card details or provision in a demo environment or any of that sort of stuff. You simply go to login, uh, where you'll either be asked to log in with your Salesforce credentials or your Google credentials. I personally use Google because I know I've only got one of those, and I don't have to remember the password. And now we're into GearSet. So GearSet's all about comparing any two sources of metadata and making it as easy to do org to org type chain sets or source control to source control to merge branches. It's all simple, simple, simple. So I've done that work in my org. It's a developer org. And I want to share that with my team via the source control system. So I've got a repository set up in GitHub already, admins guide to Git, where I've seeded it with my initial org. So next, I want to create a new branch. And this is preferred git client. Create branch. OK, so now I've got an isolated view of the world. So everything I do in this branch is only for myself to begin with. So I'm going to press compare. So what GearSet's doing now is on the left-hand side, it's going out to my dev org. It's using the metadata API to pull down all of the metadata. So that's all of the Apex, all of the process builder, all of the configuration changes that I've made, all of my profiles, everything. On the right-hand side, it's doing the same thing, only it's going to a, a Git repository. So it's doing a Git clone. And here we go. We now get the results. So I have 
uh, got a few different categories. I've got my changed items, new items. So my changed items, I've modified that account source. I can come in here. I can see that uh, I've added a new value to that. So I'm going to grab that one. And then got some new items as well. So I've got that new custom field, which is, again, a pick list with my options. And then I've got some profile changes. So you'll notice here we're showing you the custom field permissions across all the profiles, so all grouped together. So I can select that, press Next. Gearset's going to run a bunch of problem analyzers to make sure that what I'm doing is valid. Because you know, if you make a change set that Salesforce rejects, you get that rejection message. But the version control system will never never reject you. So then I have a list of what's about to happen. This is the preferred Git client work. Press Deploy now. And now we're, we're doing our deployment, which in this case is to Git. So we're going to the version control system. At no point have I had to use any command line tooling. I have never had to use uh, any sort of the Git concepts around cloning and rebasing, because frankly, I don't care. I'm trying to share the field changes with my, uh, with my colleagues. So we've done that work. If I come over to my Git repository, which is zoomed way in, you see that branch has been created. So let's go ahead and look at what that branch is. So here I can see this is the commit that I've just done. I've modified the account object to add a new field, uh, updated the package XML. And then here we start to see all of the profile changes come in. There's all this stuff that I, that I just don't care about that gear sets hidden from me by just letting me think in terms of the Salesforce configuration changes that I've done. So I hope that shows that Git doesn't need to be scary. Um, there's a whole bunch more I could talk about it, but this was restricted to 20 minutes. I just wanted to get across this idea that uh, it can help with collaboration because your team can now start to work from the single source of truth. You get the full audit trail. You get very deliberate. I can mess around in ages in my org doing lots of different things and experimenting and going down rabbit holes. But ultimately, what I share with my team is just the, the, the smallest thing that I want to do. Uh, we have further reading uh, in our white paper. It talks about different version control strategies uh, and how to get started, how to sort of organize yourself as a team. And again, simple, simple, simple. So thanks very much. Out of time, if you want to come up, I'm happy to chat afterwards. Or else, uh, over beside the developer theater, uh, you'll see a bunch of us in orange shirts. Uh, you, you can get uh, more in-depth demos or just talk about how to adopt uh, Git at, at your teams. Thank you.